Hello and very welcome in our second YCMR webinar. In this, we're going to focus on the role of CMR in dilative cardiomyopathy, in establishing the diagnosis, identifying the underlying etiology, as well as in guiding of clinical management. Dilative cardiomyopathy stands for a group of heterogeneous cardiac conditions. These are defined by intrinsic disease of myocardium which is not due to abnormal loading conditions, such as in hypertension or valvular disease, as well as not due to external myocardial injury, such as in coronary artery disease. Characterized by progressive disease of myocardium, this CM is defined by LV chamber enlargement, contractile dysfunction in the presence of preserved LV wall thickness, and can be commonly associated with dilated and dysfunctional right ventricle. CMR can support workup of DCM by accurate assessment of cardiac function and structure as well as tissue characterization, supporting recognition of specific cardiomyopathies that are prevalent etiologies of DCM. We will now have a look at a few examples in which CMR can support differential diagnosis as well as identify specific causes of DCM. Differential diagnosis between coronary artery disease and DCM represent the first important step. In both cases, ischemic cardiomyopathy on the left-hand side, as well as non-ischemic DCM on the right-hand side, we see enlarged ventricles as well as globally impaired systolic function. In both, we see regional wall motion abnormality affecting predominantly lateral wall. This case provides a common example where differential diagnosis based on purely scene images or functional images can be very difficult. Patterns of late catalinium enhancement are distinctively different between ischemic and non-ischemic cardiomyopathy and have become means of differentiation between the two conditions. Subendocardial layer of late gadolinium enhancement, which is limited to the territory of perfusing coronary artery, represents ischemic type of late gadolinium enhancement, whereas intramyocardial layer of late gadolinium enhancement, also known as midwall stria, stands for non-ischemic type of late gadolinium enhancement. Myocarditis is an important cause of DCM as well as sudden cardiac death in young people. Diagnosis of myocarditis is made by endomyocardial biopsy and demonstration of inflammatory involvement of the myocardium. CMR has a supporting role. Based on Lake Lewis criteria, there is an increased likelihood of disease when signs are present. This includes increased T2 signal on T2 imaging as well as epi intramyocardial late gadolinium enhancement, both more frequently observed in a setting of acute myocarditis. Patients with persistent myocardial inflammation or chronic myocarditis may develop DCM. A common imaging finding in these patients is intramyocardial or midwall stria within septal segments. Cardiac sarcoidosis is another important cause of DCM. It is characterized by intramyocardial regional inflammation by way of granuloma formation. These can be found anywhere within the ventricle, however, perhaps more commonly in basal septal and anterior segments. And finally, cardiac amyloidosis, characterized by massive dilation of cardiac cavities, severe global hypokinesia, as well as commonly accompanied by pericardial and pleural effusions. Pathognomonic pattern of late gadolinium enhancement in cardiac amyloidosis with diffusely enhancing myocardium against the black blood pool is commonly helpful in recognizing this etiology. There is a huge role for CMR in guiding of clinical management of DCM through risk stratification and identification of those patients that would benefit from device therapy most. Sadly, device implantation represents a contraindication for further use of CMR in these patients. The available evidence for risk stratification by CMI in dilative cardiomyopathy centers on late gadolinium enhancement imaging. 
In this biggest study to date, the presence of late gadolinium enhancement in a way of mid-wall fibrosis was associated with a poorer outcome in terms of all-cause mortality, sudden cardiac death, as well as death, hospitalization or transplantation due to heart failure. The presence of late gadolinium enhancement was more predictive of poorer outcome compared to traditional markers like ejection fraction and diastolic volume on NIHA class. In a further study of patients undergoing ICD implantation, patients with dilative cardiomyopathy and evidence of late gadolinium enhancement had a much shorter freedom from device therapy as well as event-free survival compared to those patients without late gadolinium enhancement as well as those suffering with coronary artery disease. Similar observations were made in patients undergoing CRT, where patients with dilative cardiomyopathy and evidence with late gadolinium enhancement had much poorer survival in terms of cardiovascular mortality as well as hospitalization for heart failure. In summary, we've looked at the three important aspects in which CMR can support clinical management of DCM. By establishing the diagnosis and meeting the criteria and definition of DCM, by providing the insights into the underlying etiology, and finally, by guiding clinical management by identifying those patients with poor outcome who would benefit from device therapy most. For further reading, I would like to refer you to these sources of information. And finally, I would like to thank you for your attention.